Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu, and I am your co-host, TMD. We want to thank our main sponsor, as always, Knox Pro. That's right, Knox Pro Academy is located in Van Nuys, California. You want to find out anything and everything at Knox Pro, just log on to the website, www.knoxpro.com. Now, Big Quiche, tonight is a bittersweet episode because tonight I came in pumped up to talk about Jacob, and of course... Everybody knows by now that you lost your uncle, Sika Anuai, tonight, uh, just hours ago. So uh, right off the bat, my condolences to you, your entire family, the entire uh, wrestling world. Um, how you doing, Big Keish? Okay. Um, thank you for that, man. Um, just a correction. Uh, you know, this uh, episode was shot on Tuesday. And so um, our uncle's passing uh, was Tuesday, you know, 6, 25, 24. Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, there's, I've been, you know, just very, uh, down all day. Not, not our normal, you know, my normal self, uh, you know, I, I'm hurt and I'm feeling so much, you know, pain for our family, uh, especially his kids, you know, my cousins, his grandkids, and so forth, uh, you know, that are out there in Pensacola, Florida. So, um, yeah, just, you know, pray for us uh, as we're going through, you know, this difficult time of of losing, you know, a man that started all for, for us, you know, for myself personally, uh, to be able to guide and lead and, and smarten me up, uh, you know, how this industry works and the ins and outs. So Uncle Sega is definitely going to be missed, man. He's, I didn't see this coming, Joey. I did, I, I did not see this coming. Um, You know, he was the last one uh, of uh, that I would ever thought that I would give a, get a call early in the morning about, you know, Uncle's passing, you know, because he was, he was just so full of life, man. He was always, you know, the life of the reunions, the gatherings, the family parties together, you know. And a lot of, you know, the photos that we see during his later years in life, you can see the differences, smiles, uh, you know, taking a lot of photos with his grandkids and his kids uh, back in Pensacola. You know, I knew... I know for a minute that, you know, Uncle wanted to go home back to the islands of Samoa. And this was probably, I don't know, maybe a decade or so, uh, 15 years maybe during retirement. And uh, he used to have these conversations with uh, his sister, my mother, uh, rest her soul as well. She, uh, she would tell him, you know, go, go home. You know, you're retired now, go home. And, you know, the, the love of a father... Uh, to his kids, no matter what, it's, uh, it's unmatched, man, you know. And I know that's what what kept him in Pensacola uh, was his kids, you know. And, and when his kids had, you know, kids, other grandbabies, just they, that, that was it then. Uh, for sure, he wasn't ever going back home. The only time I would probably see him go home would probably to take his grandkids or, or, you know, or some of his, you know, kids back home to the island just to, because he was such a prideful man in the culture. You know, he was such a uh, prideful man as far as, you know, our family and a uh, very respected man in our community, in our home of American Samoa and Samoa. And we can see by the love of uh, Uncle Sika, social media uh, since Tuesday when people found out it's just all over the world and, uh, and you know you don't get that type of media without being loved without being appreciated you know the passion that this man has given his life and his body and, and his soul uh, to this industry of professional wrestling and you know we're sitting here and I'm you know, we're just looking at the screen and just seeing, you know, Uncle's picture up here. It's just, uh, 
I'm glad I I got a chance to be underneath that learning tree, Joey. Yes, sir. You know, he was uh he was one of a kind, straight shooter. He didn't play no games. If he didn't like you, he would tell you, but he wouldn't hold a grudge forever. You know, he'd smarten you up, you know, and he'd always say that uh you know, that uh let the ring straighten you out. Mm. I never understood that. Let the ring straighten you out. So meaning that, you know, the ring, you know, is always going to win. Your job is to try to just survive that thing, you know. And so, you know, my condolences go out to all his, uh, you know, all our family members, all his kids, his grandkids, he, all the fans throughout the world. You know, just thank you for showing love for one of the fathers of the you know, bloodline, some more dynasty. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I would say he was the front line of the bloodline. Him, Anafa, and Peter Maivia, they're the ones who started it all. Yeah. The reasons why your kids, yourself, uh, uh, your cousins all had a, you know, uh, a, a place of employment. Uh, you know, they, they paved the roads, and you guys all did the work and carried yeah. your own weight. But they were the, like you said, like the fathers. Um, you know, I had the privilege of uh, meeting... Uh, your Uncle Sika in 2015 at your uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. Yeah. We were up in the skybox. And I and I'll always remember that footage of uh when Roman was working uh Brock and Sika was in the audience and he took his shirt off and he starts waving yeah. it over his head. He was so proud of Roman. Um that's uh one of the wonderful memories uh I have of of your uncle. Um yeah. we we've we've talked about it before. Uh what when when you go back to your childhood, um I mean, they had to be menacing. Like they had to, they had to be, because they, they were they, larger than they life. They were tough. Yeah, they were tough on us. You know, they they wanted us to understand and realize that, you know, this business that we uh, are wanting to try to come and do, it's not a game. You know, I mentioned this before. Uh, you know, while he was training my uh, my younger brother, the Tonga kid, in Pensacola, Florida, it was outside in the tent. And, you know, anybody knows Pensacola, it's like 100-something degrees out there. And you can imagine in the tent, it's just, you know, hot, sweaty. And this is the time when the Tonga kid was, uh, uncle was getting him ready for that Roddy Piper and uh, Bob Borden angle. So they were in there training and, you know, I was sitting there. I don't know what made me giggle. Uh, I think I had heat stroke or something because, you know, my Uncle Sika heard me laughing while they were training. Then keep in mind, they were trenched, soaking wet. And and at his age, I think, I think Uncle was 40, you know, 40 years old. You're in there trying to train your, your nephew. You know, it's all business, you know, and I didn't see it that way. I just, you know. I, I, I didn't have respect for the craft, what they were doing. And I had no reason to smirk, you know, and, and laugh at what they were doing. And he, he stopped, called me in the ring, and uh, he says, come here. This is lock up with me. So, man, I go to lock up. If anybody knows the lock up of professional wrestling, it's one of the first things you do when you get in the ring. And he locked up that right elbow from a lock up and slid right into my to my mouth and it, you know all elbow Uncle Sika is a big guy you know every bit of 300 something pounds and, and man he just tore my whole mouth I mean it was just juice and blood all over the place teeth were loose and uh, he told me he said if you're going to want to do this I want to tell you don't you ever laugh at my bread and butter Wow, this is what I feed my kids with take care of my family now get the hell out of my ring and I've learned then that I don't understand why wrestlers called my ring that wasn't his ring that was a gym ring but during the time when he's in there that's his ring mm -hmm. he's in charge of it so it taught me that you know and uh you know a lot of lessons of of the industry of of what it is to to be you know Samoan uh, to to uplift uh, you know the 
the pride and the, the family name and, you know, to, to represent to its fullest, you know, and, uh, it's exactly what he did. I I don't think I'd I'd be here as far as you know into the the Hall of Fame if it wasn't for you know my uncle's Alpha and Sika the knowledge that's uh, been given and that's pretty much what I try to do nowadays is to be able to continue on and you know pass that knowledge on to you know to those in the family that are are you know possibly uh, wanting to step into the family business but. Everything's credited to this man here. That we we lost a a uh, just a, a huge loss in our family with Uncle Sika. A huge loss in the wrestling world. Uh, the Samoan Islands. You know this guy here. You know, between him, Peter Maivia, and Uncle Alpha, you know they put the Samoans on the map. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? I mean those are not my words. It's it's to, it's been recorded. You know for years and. I used to be back home in the islands as a young kid, 10 years old, watching them every Sundays. So, um, you know, you guys just, you know, if anything I can take away from this is I know that he's going to want us to keep moving forward um, to continue to take care of the family, uh, to continue to love one another, uh, take time to enjoy the fruits of your labor, you know? And uh, I think when I leave here tonight, you know, I'm probably going to smoke one for Uncle uh, because he was that. He was the Bob Marley in our crew, man. Uncle Seeker used to smoke? Uh, oh, come on, now. Nah. Really? He used to always, like, say, you know, stop taking. Like, he would tell my mother, like, don't take uh, when my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, her, her and uh, and my, my Uncle Seeker we lived in Pensacola. So as far as siblings, you know, they were there together all the time. Every Sunday, my mother would, you know, hit her up, uh, hit him up with, you know, his kids and meet at church. You know, she was that, you know, and everything was her brother. And I, you know, when we went to eat, you know, nightly uh, dinners, uh, hey, you guys come take food, call Uncle Sika if he needs some food or you, that we're eating someone food because she knows what type of food he likes it you know back in Pensacola you don't get too much Samoan food unless it's cooked in the house and my mother was a great cook and but she was very very close with uncle and my point was that you know he was there when she was going through her you know cancer treatment and man then you know I know how close he was with his sister and it just you know you can see that he never wanted to show her his weakness to her, but he was in pain to watch her, you know, to know that, you know, his sister is diagnosed with that. And uh, he would be, you know, always uplifting all the time, man, all the time, you know. And, you know, Uncle Alpha would be in Pennsylvania, I mean, in um, down by Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. in Mineola. So, you know, so you can imagine the relationship uh, between Uncle Sika and uh and my mother, you know, um, we were the Anoa'i Fatus in Pensacola, Florida. And this is, this is where, you know, Roman was out there, the twins, you know, uh, Roman's uh, siblings, you know, Matthew was, used to live out there, Tonga kid. You know, we all live out there, the Fatus and, uh, and uh, the Anoa'is. But uh, Uncle Sika was the chief in, in our Pensacola. Uh, he was the man. He was the one that... You know, brought family together, make sure everything was, you know, was uh, uh, cop copacetic, straight. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. no no funny business, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, he used to show up to to independent wrestling over there in Pensacola. And, uh, you know, this is, he's retired now. But he would show up to independent wrestlers, wrestling companies and show and tell them, hey, why are you running wrestling in my town? <laughs> that old territory mentality, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he, he would come to us and say, you guys should be running the shows, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is where we're from, you know. Besides Samoa, we're from here. So you guys need to be controlling, like, you know, running this Pensacola independent circuit. And it was like, you know, at that time we were working in the shipyards and we had no time to come in. Right. But, you know, his love for the business, 
it was always that wrestling all all the time, you know. Um, you know, he would pull his ring. It, not that he needed it, but it just made him feel good to help work with the newer generation. Not only Samoans, just anybody kid that wanted to learn professional wrestling, you know. And uh, he, he, he'll train you hard. He didn't pull no punches. Uh, he was always straight up for his thing. If you were the shits, he'd say, you're the shits, get out my ring. <laughs> you know, he'd mm-hmm. tell it like it is because mm-hmm. he said, the promoters don't give a damn about you. It's you got to work hard and you got you to gotta be that player, be that, that talent that can outshine and outwork anybody you work with. So you can imagine, that's not just Uncle Sika. Right. You got two uncles breathing down your neck. You know, Uncle Alpha too as well. Wow. So, you know, they 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 did a lot, man. They and continue to do a lot. You know, uh, uh, just looking at these, the, we don't even have enough time to really go down. Uh, you know, Uncle Sika's life and his legacy of uh, what he's done uh, as far as his family. You know. Um, I remember being in San Francisco as a young kid when they used to come with the whole, you know, some of the rosters, some of their good friends, Kamala, Andre, and all these other cats to to Dublin Street. And, you know, my parents and uh, we would barbecue and we get to see the wrestlers. I mentioned this before and we were so proud. You know, I couldn't wait for some of my friends to, you know, hopefully drive by our street to see all these wrestlers in front of our place, you know, because we didn't have a backyard. So it's, you know, Simone, you know how we do it. We just pull the grill out in the front yard Mm -hmm. and just barbecue on, you know, public property. You know what I mean? And we would hope that, you know, people drive by and, you know, see our uncles there and we would have a, you know, great time to take photos with them and, and then go that night right down the street to Cow Palace, you know, San Francisco. The Bay Area was the spot, man. Like, you can rest assured when the Samoans, the wild Samoans came to town, it was a sellout in the Cow Palace. It's because, you know, the majority, you know, Joey, majority of the Bay is just full of Polynesians. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You know? And so, you know, it's, uh, he, uh, you know, has done a lot, man. It's, he was a, trying to sum it all up, uh, you know, how Uncle was, you know, just to, what, how he looks doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't do right. Meaning that, that look of, you know, a beast, someone savage, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's the look that the wrestling look. But, you know, when you know him, oh my goodness. Yeah, man, he, Uncle just laugh, makes you laugh, you know. He, I think that's where my brother TK got it from, because TK was Uncle Sika's boy, really? like really, really, you know. At wow, at the age of fourteen, you know, um, TK, uh, Sika got him, thrown him on top of a greyhound from San Francisco, three days all the way to Pensacola, Florida, and. You know, Sika took care of TK, trained him, got him prepped up for it. Every, everywhere they went in this brown van, he had a Dodge brown van, but only one, two seats in the front, the driver and the passenger. But the back was one of those plywood homemade beds. Mm-hmm. Like, and then another cooler. It's like almost a beach life. Wow. And they would be out in Pensacola Beach, man, you know, the fishing poles and stuff. And so, you know, I, I know, you know, if anybody, like, you know, on a on a personal tip, you know, my, my brother TK is probably, you know, the whole family's, you know, hurt, but because he had that relationship with his uncle, you know, with Uncle Sika, you know, I tried to, you know, reach out to him and, you know, give him his, give him, give him his space. I haven't heard back, but, and I'm sure that, you know, everybody's going to it, but it was Sika, man. He's, He's not that what you see on TV. You know what I mean? He's that theatrical movement him and his brother play on there. 
That'll make you scared, like, you know what facials I mean? Facials, too. The facials uh, with the wide eyes and right? the hair and not speaking any English. They are the Samoan savages, man. Uh, you imagine, like, the craft. Mm -hmm. They already figured it out back in the day, right? Before anybody even came to them to teach them this, right? And so years, you know, they've been passing this knowledge down all the way. And, you know, back in the day, I tell this story, they used to ride you know, uh, up through the, the the roads of Mobile, Alabama. You know, this is back in the day where racism was heavy, KKK, you know? They, my uncle's the territories of Pensacola, Alabama, Dothan, Alabama, up to New Orleans, all those areas in the dirty south. So you can imagine these two brothers, man, mm -hmm. you know? Got to lean back on the seat, cover his head with a towel just to go up through the roads of Mobile, Alabama, to get to the next tower. And they, they had to have them. The promoters had to have them because the Wild Samoans was drawing, you know, to put them with, you know, JYD, you know, Dusty Rhodes, uh, I mean, uh, Ernie Ladd. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the Samoans, man, they were drawing big-time money back in the day. 40-something-plus years later, come on. Man. Come on, Seek. You always going to live on in this yep. family. You always, through the wrestling world, as long as they continue. Every time you fans see a bloodline out there, I want y'all to remember this man here because this is where everything started with him, uh, High Chief Peter Maivia, and also, you know, Uncle Alpha. But besides um, not laughing during his training sessions, what do you, what would you say is one of the most important lessons your Uncle Sika taught you? Maybe not just in pro wrestling, maybe in life. Oh, yeah. Both. But it, it was a family man. You know, to continue your job is to take care of your family. Take care of the family. Um, to respect and love and don't be afraid to represent where you come from, the culture of Samoa. Put God first in your life, which, you know, majority of times uh, you know, I'm guilty for that. I, I don't, you know, you know, sometimes I just, you know, I, I don't even always forget the word. But, you know, when you're so, there's no excuse for it, but I know, like, in this industry, and the hustle and the grind is so nonstop that sometimes I, I forget to, you know, to slow it down to take care of myself. And, you know, I ain't heard from people in a minute. And uh, my phone, you know, nonstop texting. You know, people, you know, my condolences, they love me. You know, sorry for the loss. And, but, you know, I'm... I'd rather just, you know, have people say it before. Because I always say tomorrow's never promised. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, what's the sense of coming to me when, you know what I mean, we could have just took time of our busy schedule. And I'm guilty for that. And so, you know, that's what uncle was that. The family, you know, the culture, the faith, you know, Respect your elders, you know, and I, I, I carry that on all the way through my kids, and and now you know, uh, teaching my grandkids, you know, when I ever, you know, when we get the chance to to link up together, you know, in this wrestling industry, it's like our life is the road. When you come home, you see the fruits of labor, and you can you're good with it, but. You know, is that enough? Because, you know, when I come home, it's just, you're so tired. You just want to, you know, see your kids, see your family, you know, go to bed, get your injuries, you know, fixed up. Because, you know, I'm not telling anybody I'm hurt to take me out the, you know, take me out the game. Take me out the game now, you know, that's going to affect my, you know, my finances as far as you know birds in the nest feeding the kids and so forth so a lot of sacrifice you know a lot of times uh we don't we don't give ourselves that and so 
I'm going to give y'all a little inside what Sikha taught me is that, you know, family, culture, your faith, be proud of who you are, no matter what, you know, um, what culture you come from, you know, be proud of that, know your worth. And, uh, you know, the rest is just take time to live life. You know, there's so much, you know, even on the daily of working nine to five, we all know how hard that is, man, to get out there. Sometimes you don't want to get up and go do it, but you know that's responsibility, you know? And that's 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 what we do as men, to get up and take care of responsibility because our queens and our, you know, our kids, they depend on us. And so take time from your busy schedule. Just, you know, enjoy you for a minute. Enjoy you for a minute and, uh, you know, pick up the phone, call somebody, call your loved ones. Even if it's just real quick, hey, man, how you doing? I just want to let you know I love you, man, and I, I'm here. So, yeah, we lost a, the world definitely lost, a, you know, an icon, lost a true, true chief in this family, in this uh, our Polynesian world of Samoa. You know, um, I want to thank all the Samoans and Polynesians uh, for all the years of supporting, you know, uh, the wild Samoans. Um, you know, just know this, that every time the wild Samoans went out there with Captain Lou Albano, you know, I mean, they won the tag team straps. Uh, they always represented all the time. So, you know, I want to uh, send a shout out to everybody and thank you for, you know, uh, all the texts and support and, the, you know, the condolences, you know, for everyone taking the time out of their busy schedule uh, to be able to, you know, show respect and show love uh, to uh, our Uncle Sika. Yeah. Um, before we wrap it up here today, um, you you you've seen a lot of matches at the Cow Palace with your uncles. Um, what's one of your favorite matches um, that that stands out from when you were a kid watching your uncle Sika, your uncle Alpha? Oh, it had to be Andre the Giant and Peter Maivia versus Uncle Alpha and Uncle Sika. Wow! So you can imagine, like, because there was this one part in the Cow Palace up by the flag. We had the nosebleed seats uh -huh. way up there, and. Uh, when we watched that match, the the Polynesians were kind of torn apart. You know what I mean? But Peter on one side, Peter on one side is a the other, big yeah. baby face. He's like the godfather of the, the dynasty. And then you got these two young, you know, wild Samoans like Bob Marley, you know, real thick, uh, you know, uh, dreadlocks. But they were so good, dude. It, it was like, you know, you really believed him getting there and just whooping Peter's ass, right? And Uncle Pete, you can see him sometimes from a wrestler's eye, you see him sometimes laughing at them. <laughs> and once Peter, you know, he starts shaking those shoulders, you know, and start, you know, um, uh, throwing his hands up on his hair and he would headbutt them. You know, they would sell the headbutt and Peter would jump up in there and give him another headbutt. Uncle Siegel would take this jumping bump, you know. Here comes Uncle Alpha, boom. Peter would hit him with a Samoan drop. They'd go down, and then here comes Andre, boom, hit the rope and drop the, uh, the ass on him. One, two, three. Wow. And, and sometimes the, the matches didn't even go that long because it was such a it was such a, a spectacular buildup uh, for the match. And, you know, the promoter, Roy Shire, back in the day, he was always smart to book Peter Maivia and... Uh, Uncle Alpha and Sika on that, and always had Andre the Giant as a feature, you know. So, but yeah, I was, and you know, that had to be one of my favorite matches. And of course, they had a you know a hell of a match against Pat Patterson and Ray Stevens wow. and a tag. So those two blonde cats versus you know Uncle Alpha and Sika, you you can imagine, boy. Um, they, yeah, they used to tear the house down. Now, when they would work against those guys. Mm -hmm you can rest assured the Samoans were babyface. Even though, you know, Ray Stevens and Peter Maivia are babyface, but mm. 
that's just how strong the draw was in Polynesian culture, you know, back in the Bay Area. You know, that's just, this is where their father's church is from. The first preacher to build the church for the Polynesians, you know, and these guys here came to run the streets of, the, you know, the Bay Area streets of San Francisco, you know, just knocking people out and, you know, just this, this wrestling, you know, probably saved their lives too, you know. Wow. So it was a lot of history. Not only they so represent much. Samoa, mm -hmm. but I, I like to say the Bay Area too. Yep. Because the Wild Samoans, mm -hmm. you know, the Bay Area, you know, all you got to do is punch up to Dublin Street. You can Google map it and just, you know, scroll into it, like widen up your screen. Mm -hmm. And you watch that little house where all of us came from. Wow. It's right there. Yeah, so... So that's, you know, that's, uh, uh, to answer your question, you know, that would probably have to be one of my uh, favorite times and memories there in, uh, um, with Uncle Sika and Nafa uh, back in the Cow Palace back in the day when they had their wrestling match, just to see the, the pride and uh, of all the Polynesians up in that, you know, nosebleed section. Mm -hmm. It's way up there, but damn it, you can hear a lot of choos, <laughs> you know, back in the day. So that's just <laughs> how much they love, you know, uh, Uncle Sika and Alpha, you know. Wow. What a legacy, and man, yeah. what, a, what a life he led. Um, and he, he definitely paved the road, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, first uh, wrestlers such as yourself and your family members. And uh, the Fatu Anawai uh, bloodline, I, I believe it's in good hands, and it's definitely um, not going anywhere um, anytime yeah. soon. Um, thanks to the to the fathers who started it, Peter Maivia, Alpha, and Sika. So uh, rest in peace, uh, Sika, and again, uh, condolences to the family and everyone affected by his loss. Um, did you have any final words tonight, Big Keish? No, just, just know that we all love you. I love all of you. Thank you for the condolences, and uh, till next time, God bless y'all.